the thing, right? We are finished with the you know uh, parts of all the colon, cecum, ascending colon, transverse colon, ascending colon, and sigmoid colon, right? And now you can see the sigmoid colon, it is going to be continuous with the rectum, okay, right? at the level of the S3, right? And here you can see this is the second last of the part of the, the you know, gastrointestinal tract, right? There's a distal part of the gut, rather, right? It is the part of the gut, basically, rectum, the part of the uh, GIT that extends between the kis -kis sigmoid colon and the anal canal, right? It is going to end into the anal canal, the last part of the large intestine, right? So it's placed between the sigmoid colon and the anal canal here. Right? So this part, this is called as a rectum G. Okay. Now, <clears throat> and this is the part of the, you know, large right? When there is a distension of the rectum takes place, it will lead to the desire to defecate. Okay. Now, normally it remains, you know, collapsed, okay, empty normally, like whenever the stools are going to pass or the, you know, feces, they are going to pass from the sigmoid colon into the rectum, the distension of the walls of the rectum it will lead to the desire to defecate, right? Okay. Now, as I told you before, that it is also a part of the large shrine. But being a part of large shrine, it is devoid of the characteristic features of the large shrine. What are the characteristic features of the large shrine? Can anybody tell me? Large shrine ke characteristic features kya hote hain? Aapko nazar aa rahe saare saare yahan pe. What is this? Here, ribbon bear like structures. Tinea coli. Tinea coli, right? Tinea coli. Or so, fatty spots. These are the appendices. Epiplaki. Sac like formation. These are called seculations. So, the large sign has got certain characteristics. Which I told you that it is number one wide bore. Okay, so it is the that quality of the white board, it is you can find it in the rectum. Otherwise, the rest of the three, which are the tinea coli, appendices that people like and these circulations, right? This these or the obstructions, these are not present in the uh, rectum. Okay, so rectum being a part of large intestine, but it is divided with the characteristic features of the large strain. Is it clear G? where it is located? <clears throat> So it is the it is located where it's situated in the post. This is this is the pelvic cavity proper. When you go with pelvis, pelvic brain is going to divide the pelvis into the upper false pelvis and lower true pelvis. Okay, the upper greater pelvis and lower lesser pelvis, right? So it is located where it is located in the most posterior part of the pelvic cavity. Pelvic cavity is the posterior most part of it is lying over there. It is present in front of the lower three sacral vertebrae and the coccyx. Here are coccyx. Right? Because it is going to be continuous with the sigma call in front of the S3. Beginning of the S3 here. Right? And so it is Located where in the posterior part of the pelvic cavity, in front of the lower three sacral vertebrae and the coccyx vertebrae. Right? So, this is the location or the situation of the rectum. Any problem, Dilnoji? No, it's extended here. It extends. It basically begins, I told you, as a continuation of the sigmoid colon over here at the level of the S3 sacral vertebra. Okay? Third sacral vertebra. Right? And its rectosigmoid junction is basically represented by the attachment of this mesentery. The mesentery is the sigmoid mesocolon, the lower part. Where the sigmoid mesocolon is the lower part, where the sigmoid mesocolon is the sigmoid mesocolon. And where the sigmoid mesocolon is the lower margin of the sigmoid mesocolon, and where it is going to be, you know, going to show the rectosigmoid junction. Okay? Okay, now it's going to be come end here <clears throat> with the anal canal. This is an anal canal, right? It's going to be at the anal canal, right? At the anorectal junction. Okay, just show you something else. 
that is x. So it's going to be continuous above with the sigmoid column, right? And then it's going to be, <coughs> you know, it is going to end over here with the, this is an annular canal, right? And this is the annular rectal junction, right? So it is going to end and going to become continuous with the annular canal at the annular rectal junction. What is the location, Kaji? The annular rectal junction, it lies It lies out. Okay, let me just use the case. Okay. So this this is the rectum over here. We're going to continue so over here with the this is an canal, right? Take it. So it is going to be continuous with the anal canal about two to three centimeter in front and below the tip of the coccyx. Yeah, the centimeter. Ye sacrum. Hai. This is a coccyx bone and this is a tip of the coccyx. So about it is going to be continuous with the anal canal about two to three centimeter in front and below the tip of the coccyx here. And it corresponds to the neck of the, you see, to the apex of the prostate. This is a gland which is present at the neck of the bladder. This is a urinary bladder, right? In the case of the male, urinary bladder key lower pole pe, at the neck of the urinary bladder aapko yahan pe gland nazar aata hai this is called as a prostate right so at the apex of the prostate this anorectal junction over here it lies at the level of the apex of the prostate right so the rectum it is going to be continuous with the sigmoid colon at the level of the s3 vertebrae and then it is going to be continuous inferiorly with the anal canal at the anal rectal junction which lies about two to three centimeter two to three centimeter in front and below the tip of the coccyx and it corresponds to the level of the apex of the this prostate gland in the males is it clear G? in males may it is going to represent at the level of the apex of the prostate branch you have to clear the problem to me what is the location and situation of the you know Rectum. Now, what is size? It is about 12 centimeters long. Rectum is about 12 centimeters long. Okay. And its upper part, upper diameter, it is continuous with that of the sigmoid column. Okay. Sigmoid column may the diameter is about three to four centimeters. So it is going to be continuous in the upper part with the sigma column. Well, in the lower part, it is dilated. It is dilated to form the ampulla, right? This dilated lower portion of the, you know, uh, rectum is called as a direct, the rectal ampulla, right? And this rectal ampulla, it is not a straight tube, right? It is going to show the certain curves, the anterior posterior curves and the Lateral curves. Okay? So it's like anterior posterior curves over or so you can see this one. First, second, and third, three lateral curves. So this rectal ampulla or the rectum, it is not a straight tube. The anterior posterior curves show or here hey, you can see these are the lateral curves, jump job in the or anterior posterior curves of the pathology. Okay. So it is going to show the <clears throat> two anterior posterior curves. Okay. This you can see it is lying in the concavity of the sacrum here. It is going to make this curve, first curve, and this is anterior, this anterior and posterior. So the median plane, right? So it is going to show the anterior posterior. This is the first curve, and this one is a second curve. So anterior posterior two curves show kar hai, or laterally it is going to show the three curves. TKG. First of all, we'll talk about the anterior posterior curves. The anterior posterior curve, I told you that it is going to, this rectum, it's going to follow the concavity of the sacrum. The okay, sacrum bone is slice, it is concave from inside the no? inner aspersum. So, this concavity of the sacrum is basically followed by the this 
part of the rectum, right? So <clears throat> it follows the anterior concavity of the sacrum. And then when it will reach over here and near the tip of the coccyx, it is going to bend downwards and backwards. convexity convexity, it is convex like this, right? So again, it is going to make an anterior posterior curve, but it is this time it is directed downwards and backwards. Downwards and forwards, but in the lower part, it is going to form downwards and backwards. At its junction with the anal canal, right? Or flexure ban this flexure in the lower part. This is called as a perineal fracture. Because perineum is going to leave the pelvis and here you see this is the pelvic floor. Or pelvic floor, <coughs> pelvic floor to muscle, right? So the pelvic floor to cross cut and enters into the perineum. So it is going to form this flexure over here that is called as a perineal flexure. So you can see in the median plane, it is going to show the two anterior posterior curves. The first one, when it is going to follow the concavity of the sacrum, and the second one, when it is going to form the this perineal fracture. So these two anterior posterior curves, these are present in the rectum, right? Okay, now we'll talk about the lateral curves. The lateral, I told you that it is going to show the three lateral curves. The upper lateral is towards the right, the right side, right? And then the middle one, it is convex to the left. And the lower one, again, convex to the right. So, the lateral curves are three. Upper right, middle left, and then the again, the lower right. Okay, the other one is with the the first one is the uh, one with the with, uh, with the right convexity the second one middle one with the left convexity and then third one the lower one with the right convexity right so it is going to it is not a straight u it is going to represent the two curvatures the anterior posterior curvatures which are in the median plane first one in which it is going to uh, you know uh, run along the concavity of the sacrum and secondly where it is going to form the perineal fracture where <coughs> Where it is going to be continuous with the anal canal, right? And lateral curves, I have told you, the upper lateral is convex, middle lateral is uh, middle lateral is convex to the uh, left, and the lower lateral is going to convex to the right. Okay, ji. Okay. Now we will talk about the peritoneal relations. The peritoneal relations, my boy, it is divided into the three parts according to peritoneal relations. The three parts, my kya say, brother? In the upper part, here, you see, in the upper part, here, it is going to be, have this peritoneal attachment, anterior aspect, sides, anteriorly and sides, right? Anterior, the lateral surfaces are basically covered in the upper one third of the rectum, right? In the middle one third, here, it is just covered by the on the on anterior surface. Okay, ji. Okay. So they can, yeah. In the middle part, it is just covered on the anterior surface. You have in the you know upper part of the anterior and the lateral surfaces, and in the middle part by the anterior surface, and in the, the lower one third, there is no attachment of the vertebrae. It is divided the vertebrae. Okay, ji. Jahan pe rectal and pulmonary nothing dilated on the part. That part it is basically divided of the Right. As far as muscular cords are concerned, the chair told you before the large intestine ke kitne cords hote hain ji? Large intestine ke muscular cords kitne hote hain ji? The two in number, outer longitudinal and the inner circular. Right. And uh, I have told you before. Okay, just show you. Okay, you can see that the large intestine may the longitudinal port it is going to form the tinea coli, which is arranged in the form of three bands, right? But when these three bands re reach at the junction of sigmoid of the rectum, they are going to spread. <clears throat> it's going to spread over here. This posterior one coming down over it's also spread over here. It's going to they are going to spread over the surface of the rectum and it's going to make the what make bigger regular. Longitudinal muscle port around the rectum. Okay, the tinea, 
they are just you know limited up to the recto sigmoid junction and when these they will reach at the level of the recto sigmoid junction to kya hota hai these fibrous bands they are going to expand and they are going to make meet, meet each other and going to form the regular longitudinal muscle coat on the outer aspect of the rectus wall theek hai ji koi problem to nahi hai theek hai iske muscle coat mein it has got the regular longitudinal outer layer and the inner circular layer <coughs> now we'll talk about mucous membrane the mucous membrane but if you have a look over here the mucous membrane of the rectum it is going to i told you that most of the time it remains empty theek hai most of the time it remains empty right so it has got the two types of the you know for the mucous membrane <clears throat> the longitudinal folds here more especially in the lower part and this transverse folds theek hai this transverse folds so the longitudinal folds are transitory but these are you know when the you know rectum is normally it is going to be the lower part of the rectum and when the rectum is distended distended they are they are going to disappear whereas the transverse of the horizontal folds you can see over here these transverse or the horizontal folds they are about 3 to 4 in number okay mostly the three number you can see over here right so these are also called as the houston's folds right or also called the plaque transversalis plaque plaque is basically the i told you this is a term used for the mucous folds the mucous membrane so the plaque transversalis or the houston valves right and these are the permanent it means that they are not going to be you know when the rectum is distended they are not going to be disappeared theek hai and their position varies you can see these valves basically the more, more, the third one it is much more marked right right the third one is much more marked and that is basically in the constant position right and it is present at the end of the rectal ampulla okay it's present at the rectal ampulla and it is basically responsible for supporting the weight of the feces theek hai ji here you can see jab bhi rectal ampulla start hota hai this figure one so it is the largest and it is more constant in its position and it is you know its kind of function care you particularly basically it is responsible for to weight the support of the feces okay and it also going to prevent the over distension of the rectum so these transverse folds of the rectum or the ostium valves these are <coughs> Going to prevent the over distension of the rectum. Okay, sir. Now we'll talk about its relations. Sir, now visceral relations. I just going to show you now over here. First of all, we'll talk about it in the meals. So in the meals, the relations of the rectum. The upper two two third of the rectum. This one. The upper two third of the rectum. This one here, right? The upper two third rectum. It is related to this space, which is present between the rectum and the bladder. When I go there, then the anterior to the rectum in the males, there lies a urinary bladder. And for the urinary bladder, we use a word vesicle. Okay. So the this pouch this space right this is which is present between the rectum and the urethra that is called as the rectal vesicle pouch theek hai so in the upper two third of the rectum and dearly it is related to the rectal vesicle pouch and in the living subjects over here the rectal vesicle pouch it is filled over here with the you know coils of coils of small sign and this is the loop of the sigmoid sigmoid colon is present in this space theek hai sigmoid colon dekhna yahan par and it is you just it's going to like this in this you know space present between the rectum and the urethral bed right so <clears throat> upper two third of the rectum it is related to the rectal vesicle pouch right which contains in the sigmoid colon and the squares of small intestine in the lower one third here it is related 
तो तो पोस्टीरियर सरफेस ऑफ यूरिनरी ब्लैडर यूरिनरी ब्लैडर ना बेटा इसके पोस्टीरियर सरफेस से रिलेटेड है एंड देयर आर द स्ट्रक्चर्स व्हिच आर प्रेजेंट अलोंग द पोस्टीरियर सरफेस ऑफ द यूरिनरी ब्लैडर यहां पे आपको नजर आ रहा है दिस इज सी दिस ग्लैंड ओवर हियर दिस इज कॉल्ड एज अ सेमिनल वेसिकल राइट और ये इसके ऊपर से आपको ट्यूब नजर आ रही दिस इज यूरेटर कमिंग फ्रॉम द किडनी एंड इज गोइंग टू ओपन इन द पोस्टीरियर पार्ट ऑफ द और द बेस ऑफ द यूरिनरी ब्लैडर मैं आपको एक और जगह पे दिखाता हूं posterior this is this is a posterior relation posterior surface of urinary bladder and these are the structures which are present on the posterior surface of urinary bladder you can see you can go to one side you can see these two two tubes two ureters coming from the two kidneys right and the left they are going to open into the <coughs> base of the bladder over here theek hai ji uske baad you can see these two two tubes coming these are called as the vas deferens right these vas deferens these are Going to lie on the posterior surface of the bladder, and these vas deferens they are going to be have a close close relation with these small glands. These are called the seminal vesicles, and these two ducts they are going to form over here the ejaculatory duct, which passes through the you know this is a prostate lying at the you know neck of the bladder, right? So these are the structures which are present on the posterior surface of bladder. So ultimately they are in what they are lying in the anterior relation to the lower one third of the rectum is it clear ji the structures which are present on the posterior surface of bladder they are going to form the anterior relation of the lower one third of the rectum is it clear ji the problem to nahi hai bache no sir so here you can see again we will repeat it again in the male <coughs> the anteriorly the upper two third of the rectum it is In relation to the rectal vesicle pouch, this space which is present between rectum and the posterior surface of the urinary bladder, right? And this rectal vesicle pouch it contains the sigmoid colon and the ducts of small intestine, whereas the lower one third may all those structures which are present along the posterior surface. So that is the number one, the base of bladder by itself, then the terminal part of the uterus or the ureters, and then the vas deferens, vas deferens, the seminal vesicles. And the prostate. So all these structures, which are present on the posterior surface of the urinary bladder, they are going to form the anterior relation of the lower one third of the rectum. Now, similarly, in the case of the female, <coughs> between the bladder and the rectum, in the female, there is a another structure lies that is called as a uterus. Here you can see, right? So uterus lies between the bladder and the Rectum in this case, right? So, in the female, upper two third. So there is a the space between rectum and the posterior surface of uterus that is called as a recto uterine pouch. What is that? Recto vesicle, but that was between the rectum and the urinary bladder. So over here, between the rectum and the uterus, there is a that this pouch, this space is called as the recto uterine pouch. So in the cases of female. The uh, the upper two third it is related to the recto uterine pouch. It is also called as the pouch of Douglas. Okay, pouch of Douglas. That is D O U G L A S, right? So again, it contains the contents are same. That is sigmoid colon and the quite <coughs> the small size. They are present in this pouch. And the lower one third, of course, it is related with the here the posterior surface of the this is this is the vaginal canal. so it is related to the posterior surface of the lower part of the vagina so lower one third of the rectum it is related to the posterior surface of the lower part of the vaginal canals theek hai beta koi problem to nahi hai anterior relation mein koi problem hai to bata de male aur female dono mein just remember ki males mein rectum ke jo anteriorly the structure lies that is the urinary bladder and in the female the structure which lies in front of the rectum that is the uterus ठीक है जी अलोंग विद द वेजिनल कैनाल जी ओके जी नो वी विल टॉक अबाउट इट्स पोस्टीरियर रिलेशंस द पोस्टीरियर रिलेशंस में बच्चे यू नो यू सी दिस इज इन अ व्यू फ्रॉम द अपर एस्पेक्ट ऑफ द पेल्विस ठीक है इफ यू रिमेंबर आई टोल्ड यू Okay, the pelvic floor, which is just going to divide the pelvis into the pelvic cavity from the separate pelvic cavity from the perineal region, right? Okay, so here you can see this is the muscular floor diaphragm, 
This is also called the pelvic diaphragm, which is going to separate the pelvic cavity from the perineum, right? And here you can see this is the sacrum, right? Okay. So, this is the place rectum which is lying in close proximity with the concavity of the sacrum. As a problem to me is right? So you can see this is a sacrum over here, okay? Or sacrum, this is the concavity of the sacrum jump up rectum product. So no posterior relation here. Sacrum, of course, sacrum and the coccyx body on the right, and then the structures related with the sacrum. Okay, muscle joke is sacrum say attached over here, right? So, first of all, we'll talk about the bones. The bones or ligament cones, posterior relation may be about the sacrum and the coccyx. Okay, of it. Sacrum say the tip of the sectrum say uh, sorry uh, tip of the coccyx is the ligament is extending tiga, towards this pelvic floor. Tiga, that is called as a anocoxygeal ligament. Tiga, ji, this is anal canal ka ye opening energy. So yaha taki equite up with this nazar, right? The fibrous bands are. So that is called the anocoxygeal ligament, right? Anocoxygeal ligament in this region. And secondly, I will show you an oxygen uh, ligament uh, in some other place also. So <clears throat> then the muscles which are basically attached to the sacrum over here. Okay, so, of course, it's also, you know, uh, the posterior relation of muscles are the sacrum to the surface. So the anterior surface of the sacrum, which so, muscle originated? What is this muscle? The piriformis muscle. Okay, so the piriformis muscle. And then this is the coccygeous muscle this one right this, this is a part of the which is going to form the part of the pelvic floor right so the coccygeous muscle over here and then this most anterior that is the levator ani muscles right the more mostly you know this coccygeal part of the iliococcygeous part of the levator ani muscles here you can see right so these muscles these are lying in close you know uh, these are lying on the posterior aspect of them, uh, which are having the posterior relation to the rectum. So I am going, to, I'm going to repeat it again. The bones and ligaments which are uh, lying on the posterior aspect, which are having the posterior relation with the rectum, is because the sacrum here itself and the coccyx, and then the endocoxygeal ligament muscle may be a called the piriformis muscle, this coccygeous muscle, and the, these are the levator and muscles. Okay, this is the one side and this is the other side, right? So the levator and muscles. Right now, vessels is going to go to In this picture, you can see here the rectum lying in the concavity of the you see, this is sacrum bone over here. Okay, so all those structures which are present in front of the sacrum and between the rectum, they are going to form the posterior lesions. Is my con con I just show you. Here on the vessels, as you can see, the inferior mesenteric artery is coming down, down over here, and when it passes behind the, you know, uh, sorry, when it crosses the pelvic rim, it is named as superior rectal artery. The superior rectal artery, right? It is coming to lie on the posterior aspect. Yeah, that is. It is running on the posterior aspect of the rectum. Yeah. Okay, Similarly, another artery is coming down. I just show you. Here. So this is a rectum. We have just removed the rectum from here. And you can yeah. see the structures which are present behind the rectum and in front of the sacrum. Here you can see all these structures. And these are number one, two, I will show you the artery that's called as a uh, spear rectal artery. Or here you can see this another artery running down over the on the anterior surface of the sacrum. And this is the median sacral artery which is small arterial branch, which is coming from the bifurcation of aorta. Aorta is going to divide at the level of the L4 into these common iliac arteries, right? These right and the left common artery. The dono ki bifurcation says, center say this small artery that is going to or get origin from the aorta. And sometimes it is named, it's called as, you know, this is, uh, some activists believe that's a continuation rather of the aorta, right? So it is a median sacral artery. And this median sacral artery also running on the you know, anterior surface of the, you know, crosses the pelvic, you know, this sacrum promontory and then runs on the anterior surface of the sacrum behind the rectum. So 
this artery. So there are two arteries which are present on the uh, posterior, uh, the posterior relation of the rectum. Number one is uh, the sphere rectal artery, which is the continuation of the, continuation of the inferior mesenteric artery. And another one is this one, the, that is the median sacral artery, which is the branch of the abdominal layoplasia. So these two vessels, these are running, these are having the posterior relation with the rectum. Here you can see the, the sympathetic chain running on both sides, right and the left side. Okay? Do know sympathetic chain are right. So these sympathetic chains, these are present in the, in the posterior relation of the rectum, right? These are the anterior remi of the S1, S1, 2, 3, S2, 3, 4 over here, and C1 here. These are coming from the you know. Uh, <coughs> and clear sacral foramina, right? So <coughs> the, these nerves, these are also in the pelvic splanking nerves also, right? So all these nerves which are uh, going to form the uh, sacral plexus basically or the branches that's coming out of it here, lying just behind the posterior relations of the rectum. Because they're just lying behind the rectum. So all these structures, number one, the bones, scolcosy bonology, sacramentary boxes. Right, muscles, muscle may the muscle forming the you know, uh, <clears throat> pelvic flow. There's a levator and neck of CGS and the, on the posterior and, and the, another muscle coming on the anterior surface of the rectum. That is the sorry, uh, anterior surface of the sacrum. That is the piriformis muscle, right? Then the so arteries, arteries may be neck of the sphere rectal artery. You are we have crossing in the chagi, and the other one is the median sacral artery. You have another artery, right? And then the nerves. Uh, 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 S2, 3, 4, C1, and the pelvis flanking nerves, right? And the sympathetic chains in this region, right? So all these structures which are present in front of the sacrum and behind the rectum, right? So these are going to form the posterior relations. And remember, all these structures, these are similar in the case of the male and the female. Okay, okay. So we'll talk about blood supply. So blood supply of the rectum. Blood supply of rectum is basically derived from the three vessels, three arteries. Number one, here you can see the three vessels and dedic artery running downwards and it's going to continuous when it causes cross, the circle promontory and it's going to continuous as the superior rectal artery. So superior rectal artery is a Chief artery of spiral rectum, and it is basically the continuation of the inferior mesenteric artery. So, uh, when it crosses the pelvic brain, rather, or sacrophomotic cross, it is just lying medial to the ureter, left ureter, and then it enters the pelvis by descending in the root of the sigmoid curve. Let me show you. Here you can see this one, G. If you have the artery coming down over here, right? Okay. 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 You can see this one right. So the infusion is the entire artery, which is just going to be continuous at the pelvic rim as the sphere rectal artery. And you see it is going to enter the pelvic rim over here by descending, right? Medial to the left ureter artery, right? So it is running medial to the left ureter over here, and then it will enter into the sigmoid mesocolon. Okay, sigmoid mesocolon will travel carry, then it will be coming to reach on the posterior surface of the Rectum. Okay, so, so, so the medium of the entry passage of this artery, uh, it is just crossing, it passes through the uh, sigmoid mesocolon, cross and then it is going to come to lie on the posterior surface of the 
rectum over here. And then at the level of the S3, it is going to divide into two branches, one right and the other one is the left. And then it is going to break up into this lot of the branches. Okay? And then it is going to pierce the muscular port of the rectum. And then it will run between the rectum and the mucosa. And then it is going to, you know, form the loops in the inner canal, near the inner canal. And then it's going to take part in the anastomosis with the middle rectal artery. Here you can see the middle rectal artery and the inferior rectal artery. Such a case is going to make the anastomosis in the wall of the rectum. Right? Well, it, it is going to pierce the muscular layer of the rectum and it will run between the muscular layer and the mucosal layer. Okay? branches. So, PS carrying in the bath, you make a layer of muscular and they are going to make an osmosis with the middle rectal artery. And the middle rectal artery is another artery which is coming from the anterior division of the internal ileic artery. Okay, you made a rectal artery argument. Okay, and the other one, the third one is the inferior rectal artery. Inferior rectal artery is a branch of the internal pudendal artery. Right? Here you can see this one. Right? So, the arteries which are going to supply the region. Of the rectal, the superior rectal artery is the main arterial supply coming from the uh, inferior mesenteric artery, which basically is a continuation of inferior mesenteric artery, and it is going to cross the pelvic rim and runs in the sigmoid mesocolon, and then it reaches the posterior surface of the rectum over here. In the when it will reach at the level of the S3, it is going to divide to the right and the left branches, and then these two branches, these are going to pierce the muscular port of the rectum, and they are going to, you know. Mm -hmm. run between the muscular layer and the mucosal layer up to the anal canal or anal canal it's going to make the loops which are going to make anastomosis of the middle rectal artery and the inferior rectal artery i told you the middle rectal artery is a branch coming from the anterior division of the internal artery right and then after uh, coming over here it how it reaches how, how it reaches to the rectum that you see there is a ligament attached on both sides of the rectum over that is called a lateral ligament. So it will travel in the lateral ligament from the, you know, uh, margin of the pelvis and then in traveling the lateral ligament it is going to reach towards the lower part of the rectum over here. Okay. And the other one is the inferior mesenteric. I told you the inferior mesenteric. These are basically the branches of the internal pudendal artery. Right, which is going to supply the lower part of the rectum and this you see in the region of the inner canal. Right. So the three arteries, sphere rectal artery, middle rectal artery, and the inferior rectal artery, these are supplied the responsible for supplying the and also the posterior wall of the rectum is also supplied by the other artery that is the medial sacral artery to okay, be also going to take part in osteomosis over there. Now, what about the venous energy? Venous drainage may again with a sphere rectal or vein, it is going to drain the inferior rectal vein, okay? middle rectal vein, it is going to drain the internal iliac vein, and the inferior rectal vein is going to drain the internal pudendal vein. Well, here you can see that okay, these veins are going to make an, you know, uh, here join with each other, right? And they are going to form the certain plexuses over here, the internal uh, plexus and the external venous plexus. And these plexuses here, they are responsible. All the vessels they are going to make the osmosis. No? So, the veins be opposite communicate. So, at these places, again, it's a third place I told you before where the portosystemic osmosis takes place. You can inferior mesenteric spirit rectal vein, inferior mesenteric vein, that is basically the part of the portal venous system. Or, middle rectal vein or inferior rectal veins, these are basically.